God, praise God, I'm here to do the assignment of um, friends and family and what really is a friend and what is considered family. And I always like to look up the word in our dictionaries. Um, if this goes out, I'll just shout. I got a loud voice anyway. Um, a friend. A friend is someone who attaches or is attached to a one another person by affection or an ally and an ally in a fight <clears throat> or a cause <laughs> or a supporter a fellow member of a party a friend can be your buddy your pal your amigo your comrade someone you trust and like enough to hang on to Yes. or to hang out with. Mm -hmm. Family. Family comes to us by our parents, by our DNA, children who are living in the same household together as a unit. A group of people reflected to or related to one another by blood or marriage or descendants of a common ancestor. Mm -hmm. So for us, Friends and family is those of us who have been connected by the blood, Amen. Amen. by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Those of us who have accepted, trusted, and believed that he is our Savior. Yes. And when we accept it and believe on him being our Savior, he's connected us not only as friends, but family. Yes. Amen. We're family one to another. Yes. We stick together, yes. we fight for one another, right. we trust in one another, and we have faith in the same member, and that is our Heavenly Father. Yes. So today, I think we're all family. Yes. Family who have the attributes of being friends. Yes. That we will stand together, come together, and be there for one another. Yes. So family, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that we continue to grow this family, that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as we come together for one cause and that is to serve our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Lady Walker. Amen. Amen. At this time, we got a treat coming. Amen. Praise God. That was solo. Amen. By none other than the Apostle. Amen. 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 Can you just stand on your feet? Yes. Lift your hands up. And just begin to worship your God right where you are. You don't need nobody to tell you anything. Just worship him. If you know who he is to you, come on, I don't hear nobody. Worship has a sound to you. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. everybody worship for your name and greatly and greatly to be praised come on we're just going to set an atmosphere I sing I sing praise
stranger to what we're supposed to do. Come on and give God praise in this place. Come on, come on, come on. We too low, we too low. We too low. Come on, everybody that's got two good legs, stand on your feet. Come on and stand on your feet. He's worthy, he's worthy. Come on, let's give him glory. Let's set an atmosphere for miracle signs and wonders. Come on, come on, come on. to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Let me tell you that
Give honor to the angel of this house. God bless Pastor and Lady Walker. We thank God for them today. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Hallelujah. And we thank you for this ministry that we are here supporting on today. Can you all help me celebrate Overseer Ronnie C. Davis? give honor to this great quorum of men and women that are here. First Lady Evangelist Shalette Miller, Prophetess Sophia Edwards, God bless you today. This great quorum of preachers, Apostle Kevin Miller, Apostle Glory to God, Apostle Edwards, Prophet Reginald Knight, Glory to God, and Apostle Abishai, God 
God bless you on today. Glory to God. We thank God for all of the ministry gifts. Pastor Hall and First Lady Hall. To all of the pastors, all of the First Ladies, evangelists, missionaries, prophets. That grace this service to the children, to everyone here in the household of faith. Thank God for the, the minstrels that set the atmosphere. Thank God for my husband. For him. Thank God that he joined us together to do a work. Amen. Glory to God and God is faithful. Hallelujah. Just thank God for this assignment. I thank God for Lady Davis. I, she was one of the first people that I met when I came to Texas and um, met her in the bottoms. And I hear somebody say we started from the bottom but we're here. Amen. God has been faithful to us. It's been 10 years and God has yet kept us and been faithful to us. And I honor her and Pastor Davis on today. We love this great man of God. He is a gentle giant in the kingdom of God. He doesn't have very many words, but when he opens up his mouth, he speaks with wisdom and knowledge. So let me just declare and decree that this is your season to be blessed. You have sown in many fields. You have sown people that you've sown and served people that did not respect the oil and the wisdom that God crowned your head with. But this is your hour to sit in the divine place that God has prepared for you. And I declare and decree that you need to get ready to come off that job. work to do and know that we love you and we pray for you and can't nobody ever take your place. Amen. You all affectionately call him Pops Davis. <laughs> Amen. So we got to learn to do like other cultures do. They take care of their elderly and I'm not saying that he's old. I'm saying he's wise. And we need to learn how to entreat wisdom. The Bible tells us to buy the truth and to sell it not. It tells us to buy wisdom around our neck and put it on our eyes as frontlets. And the reason why this 21st century church is so jacked up is because we put the elderly people, the wisdom uh, uh, the wisdom of this age, we put them on the back seat and we did this Frank Sinatra thing and said, I'm going to do it my way. But can I tell you that there is no other way? There is no other way. There is no other way. You cannot get to the next level without learning how to honor. Before humility, before honor is humility. That's the word of God. And he said, learn how to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Thank God we have been going, going, going. And I got a little bit of a voice left, but y'all, anybody that know me, no, I'm going to give God everything I got. Glory, hallelujah. Thank God for this subject on today. The Lord took me a different way. Uh, he took me a different way. And some of you um, may be looking for something. And I don't know what you're looking for, but I'm just going to give you what the Lord gave me. All right, all right. Uh, the theme for today, this is Family and Friends Day. And I, and I heard what Lady Walker so eloquently put together uh, but in this life I found out that just because you come from the same family that don't mean you blood come on, yeah. come on. and people don't understand that Jesus said who is my mother who is my father who's my brother who's my sister them that do the will of my father the work of my father so I found out that I got other brothers and sisters that didn't grow up with me but we have the same Father, glory to God. And so I, I learned that in this thing called ministry, that it is hard to win your family. It's hard to pastor your family. It's hard to witness to your family. And don't fool around and be the baby of the family. Because then you can't tell the older siblings nothing. And I happen to fall into that category where I am the youngest. But I learned something. God showed me something that consistency will convince even an unbeliever. If you be consistent in your walk and consistent in your faith, uh, that's what will win 
souls. Glory to God. Yes. Subject for today is, are you truly committed? Yes. Coming from Psalm 37 and 5. I pray that you all might not like me when it's over, but you better love me. <laughs> Glory to God. I believe Apostle Amenshine and Apostle Edwards, and I know Apostle Miller got my back, so I'm not Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. He said, commit by way, those of you that can stand in the presence of the reading of the Lord's word. Will you please do that? Hallelujah. Psalm 37 and 5, it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I'm going to read that again. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. I want to go a little. Uh, I want to go back to the first of that verse. He said, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Yes. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Yes. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. It's not my intention to do anything but talk. That's my intention. I write prophet. Let's, let's deal with the word commit. Commit it. Commitment is the state of the quality of being dedicated to a cause. Mm -hmm. A pledge or undertaking. Mm -hmm. An engagement or obligation that restricts freedom or action. Major commitment including marriage and children. All right. And as I begin to look at the word commitment, and the root word of commitment is commit. The root word of committed is commit. Mm -hmm. And to commit is to be dedicated uh, to a cause or to an entity. Uh, commitment involves covenant. Yes. And covenant is a relationship between two parties who make binding promises to each other and work together to reach a common goal. I'm going to read covenant again. It is a relationship between two partners yeah. who make binding promises to each other and work together to reach a common goal. And we're living in the 21st century and we have some things going on. And the Winans wrote a song that said, don't you be deceived. Don't you listen to the devil. No. People are calling right, 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 wrong, and wrong, right, and we're living in a society where people are subliminally trying to enforce an ungodly and unmoral uh, lifestyles upon our children. And, and without me saying what it is, I'm going to talk about what that is. Uh, they fooled around and got a, a symbol for their agenda for their movement yes. and they call it the rainbow mm -hmm. but I'm reminded in Genesis when God took the rainbow and he showed it to Noah it was a promise that he would never destroy the world again with water but the next time it's going to be fire so thank you for solidifying what God has said that he's not going to destroy what your work is doing with water 
but he's going to destroy it with fire. You can't mess with covenant. Covenant is till death do us part. Covenant means Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said uh, it was necessary. It was necessary. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He, he knew that there was a purpose for him coming into the earth realm. And isn't it funny that from the time that we enter into this earth, the enemy is fighting you about your purpose and your destiny. He doesn't want you to come into alignment with who God says you are because he realizes that if you ever figure out out who you are in God that you would be the one that changed your generations. You would be the generational curse breaker. You would be the one that break the neck of the enemy break the grip of poverty. That you would be the one that would be the kinsman redeemer for your bloodline. And as, as after have saying that I want to go to Ruth chapter 1. This is where God took me. Even in the, the word commitment are you truly committed? There were some things that were predicated before for he said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. The verse preceding that says, delight thyself also yeah. in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. And we want to delight ourselves. We want God to give him the, give us the desires of of our heart but there's something that we have to do yes. in this hour is something that we have to do first we got to yes. live right people want to be preached and shouted but sometimes you just need to sit down and shut up and listen to what the preacher is saying how can they hear without a preacher and how can he preach except he be sent so the word of the lord in ruth chapter 1 verse 18 says and ruth said entreat me not to leave thee mm -hmm. or to return from following after thee for whether thou goest I will go and where thou lodgest I will lodge sounds like commitment to me the people shall be your thy people shall be my people and thy God my God where thou diest will I die and there will I be buried the Lord do so to me and more also if not but death part thee and me when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her then she left speaking unto her and I just want to tie these two in. This is the story of Ruth in Ruth chapter 1. This is the story of a woman who had two sons and a husband. Naomi said. Naomi had a, a daughter-in-law, Orpha, that considered what she said. And she said, you know what? You're right. If you did have a son, I'd be too old. And then he might not want me. So I'm going to go back to the land of idolatry because I'm not committed well so we find ourselves attached with people that love the benefit of you but they are not committed to who you are I love what you can bring to the table I love what you can give me but when the going get tough the uncommitted get going my God yes so Orpha said, okay, y'all be, y'all be peace, deuces. <laughs> See y'all later. She left. And I'm trying to get to this, through this message, but the Holy Ghost is pulling on me. So I'm going to do my very best. So Orpha left. And here's Ruth. Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you, Naomi. Mm -hmm. She said, a return from following after thee for whether thou goest, I will go. Oh, yeah. And it reminds me of God as he was talking to Abraham when he was talking to Isaac as he was talking to Jacob, Moses, and Joshua. He said, don't be afraid of them for I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Yeah. He promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He said as he would be with us always, even until the end of the age. Yes. The proverb says in six troubles, yea, in seven troubles, he's going to be right there. He said, the, 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 the apostle Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life 
life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor height, nor depth, nor things present, nor things to come. Uh, nothing is going to be able to separate me from the love of God, which yeah. is in Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Are you truly committed? I'm reminded of the song, forever is a long time. That's how long I'll love you. But how many of you all know that sometimes we stand before a man and before God and we make vows to a man and to a woman and we say for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, as both as long as we both shall live until death do us part. And can I tell you that we're living in an hour where the enemy wants to destroy marriage. Yeah. He wants to destroy the union of marriage. He wants to take the man out of the house. I'm, I'm in the message. He wants to take the man out of the house because the man is headship. He's the priest, the provider, and the protector. And the enemy wants you to go back on your vow thinking that there is an option, there is an exception, but there is no exception for what God has joined together. If God puts you together, it's for better or for worse. If God puts you together, it's for Frito Chili Pie and, 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 and Great Kool-Aid, if that's what he called you to be together. It's, it's for going to Roof Chris or if it's, it's for going uh, 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 to, to Outback or, or Papado's when the season allows or it's fried bologna with the red ring around it with miracle whip and sandwich spread if if that's what the season calls for if god join you together there is no such thing as break up uh, uh the songwriter said break up to make up that's all we do uh just it's a love it's a game of give and take uh, it's a game between the two uh there says sometimes when uh elder henderson and i don't see eye to eye but i declare and decree if he pack his bags i'm gonna be in the back seat with the bags so you're not getting everything that i invested in and think you're gonna live on the cloud of ease because i went through the struggle with him then you're gonna enjoy the benefit of him no baby we riding or dying together okay i told y'all i didn't want to do that i told y'all i didn't want to do that so we're living in an hour where even wise counsel is not wise. Wise counsel is telling people to get divorced. Baby, come on, get on this front row and y'all go on a fast and we go fast and we go pray till heaven come down and show you the reason why you got married. Are you truly committed? You can't be committed to ministry and you're not committed in your marriage. You can't be committed. Because there is a ministry of marriage and God parallels it. He is the bridegroom coming back for a bride and how you're going to be unfaithful to the to your husband in the earth realm and think you're going to ride away. You're going to go up in the sound of the trump when the bridegroom comes. Who am I talking to today? He says, I'm trying to restore marriages in the earth realm. I'm trying to let you know that there is no way out. We've been preached the watered down word. We've been given watered down uh, 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 ideology, and our leaders are getting weaker and weaker. So the people that are being begotten by the weak, the, the, the leaders are even more weaker. And I remember, I remember my church mother. My church mother used to, she used to go to the international conventions and the women's convention, and she used to make enough food for the whole week for, for Deacon Blackman so that he wouldn't have to go nowhere else to eat. So he wouldn't have to go nowhere else to eat. So while she was gone one day, are you truly committed? While she was gone one day, one of the missionaries got it upon herself and say, I'm going to make Deacon Blackman some, uh, 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 some butter beans and some, some ham hocks and some cornbread and some fried chicken. And I'm going to take it over to Mother Blackman's house because I know that she's away at the women's convention. But Mother Blackman was a wise, cunning woman. Y'all don't, yeah, don't know nothing about Mother Blackman. Let me, let me tell you something about Mother Blackman. Uh, uh, we had a church anniversary and we were at the church anniversary and another young man had his eye on me and Mother Blackman said, I don't like him. I like Henderson. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. 
25 years ago, I don't like him, I like him. See, you, you have to understand that covenant don't mean that every day gonna be sunshine. Uh, songwriter said, I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. I ain't too proud to beg. Don't you know we serve a God that says, I'll never leave you. I'm not going to leave you because you, you cheated on me. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you. I know you're looking at somebody else. I know you got idolatry in your heart. I know that you're coming, but I'm not going to leave you because I'm committed to my commitment. Oh, Tina oh, Turner on stage about to sing a song and Ike Turner had given her a good old fashioned butt whooping. He comes over to her and kiss her on the cheek and tears begin to run down her eyes and she says, somebody please help me. Somebody please help me. Uh, you, 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 I'm just a fool, you know, a uh, fool in love. She said, but you, but you know good. My God. She's singing a song. Y'all act like y'all been saved all y'all life. I'm so sick of church, folks. Y'all act like y'all ain't never did. Some of y'all got it set on your radio stations when you get in the car. <laughs> That's why we struggling because we won't tell the truth. He said, buy it and sell it not. So this woman, because she was committed to a commitment, got up and sang even when she didn't feel like singing. Aretha Franklin sang a song. She said, I ain't never met a man. I ain't never loved a man the way that I love you. And I found myself singing that to Elder Henderson. But 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 the, the second part of that song, the lyrics didn't apply to me. So I couldn't go that far in the song. But when God puts you with somebody that's your kingdom partner, kingdom means that you don't just operate in this earth realm, that you understand that he puts you together for purpose. Marriage is for purpose. God instituted marriage for purpose. He said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. Okay, well, we, not, we can't have no children, but you can multiply the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You can show the people, you can show the world your, your, your good works so that they can glorify your father which is in heaven. And the problem is we're not teaching people how to be married. So if we can't teach you how to be married, you won't understand commitment. Commitment is not just somebody giving 50-50 because sometimes it's 90-10, sometimes it's 20-80, sometimes it's 40-60. But I'll take whatever percentage of it and work with it because God is in the mathematics. My God, my God, my God. So we have a woman that lost her husband. Now she got two daughter-in-laws. And she said, babies, ain't nothing I can do for you because I'm too old to give you another son. And Orpha say, mama, you've been good to us, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the place that I know that's home. I'm going back to familiar. Who am I talking to? But, uh, but, but Ruth say, she said, entreat me not to leave you. I, I can't go back to the Moabites because they low down no good people. I don't have a good lineage with them back there. You showed me a more excellent way. You showed me how to be holy, how to be sanctified, how to love the Lord thy God with all my heart, thy mind, and thy soul. You taught me how to be a virtuous woman. So what is there back there for me? Why are you struggling with what's behind you? My God. She said, entreat me not to leave thee. She said, I saw something in you that makes me want to run on and see what the end is going to be. She said, don't make me return or follow after thee from whether thou goest, I will go. Wherever you go, I'm going to go because I got that kind of commitment with you because you didn't leave me when the chips was down, but you gave me wise counsel. You gave me an advice. And it's not fair that, 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 that daddy is gone and my husband is gone, that I leave you by yourself. Commitment says, I don't just want the 
benefit of you, but I'm committed to you in the low times. I'm committed to you in the high times. I'm committed to you during death. I'm committed to you during sickness. I'm committed to you in whatever that we got to go through. She said, thy people will be my people. She said, I'm, I'm going to forget about who I am because I found a new identity in you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And he said in Acts, he said, if, if, if after ye have received power, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost have come upon you. So Jesus did not just leave us with the gift of salvation. He married us to the paraclete and the paraclete walks alongside of us, the paraclete, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, who is married to us until the day of Jesus Christ. He, he's the word says now unto him who is able to present us from falling and to present us faultly, faultless before the presence of his glory. That's the Holy Ghost. He's a keeper and he's committed to his job. He's committed to his duty. But the problem is we're not preaching the Holy Ghost. We're preaching prophecy. We're preaching apostolic gifts, miracles, signs, wonder. We, we, we want prophecy. We got prophecy, prophetic needles coming out of our arms because we get to, I just need a word. I need a word. I need somebody to speak over me. I need to know what my next move is. Your next move is trust in the Lord. That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, trust me. Trust me when you can't see me. Trust me when you can't trace me because I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, be still and know that I am God. Even in the midst of the storm, when you feel like you're by yourself and there's nobody that will answer the phone there, nobody that you can get to, nobody seem to understand what you're going through. He said, I'll never leave you. I'm right here. I saw you crying. I saw you wet your pillowcases. I I know what you're going through, but I just want you to just have a little talk with me. Yeah. He's committed. He's committed. He's committed. Somebody say he's committed. He's committed even when we mess up. Even when we mess up, he's committed. How many of you all know that you can mess up without intentionally messing up? It's real. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Even when you're trying to help people. Even when you're trying to help people. It's a such thing as, can I just be real with, can I help somebody? Yeah. Apostle God gave me a mentorship for some women. And I spent so much trying, trying to help these women that I neglected home. I neglected the gift that God gave me. And, and, and can I just be real with you? You can help folks that won't even turn around and spit on you if you on fire. They won't call you to see how you're doing. They won't pray for you. But what they will do is follow you so they can get some dirt on you. So they can tell the people, oh, she's not what she say she is. She not what people think she is. But the devil is a liar. I'm who God called me to be in and out of the pulpit. And if you can't handle my humanity, then you need to ask God for a little bit more grace. The problem is people want to follow you, Apostle, when you're prophesying and when you're laying hands on folk. But they can't handle Calvin Miller. They can't handle the man that like the t-shirts and the gym shoes. They want you to be in a three-piece suit and prophesy and speak in tongues and cast out devils. But how many of you all know that God don't call superheroes? You got to be committed. You got to be committed. Don't let people talk about your leaders. The same way you don't let people talk about your leader, you don't let people talk about your man or your woman. Because whatever he is and whatever he ain't, he mine. Yes, yes. That's my God. That's it. <laughs> my God, my God. It's, 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 it's funny. It's real though. It's funny, it's funny, it's funny. How people flock. They flock to wonders, what they think is a wonder. They flock to what they think the new fad is. Everybody want to go to this person's church because they heard that, 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 that folks is being slain in the spirit. 
folks being knocked out in the spirit. But if you let the spirit of Christ dwell in you richly, he'll lay you out in your home. You don't have to go to a building to get laid out. He'll lay you out on the floor and begin to deal with you and take up. Purge and you can purge at home. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be water the snow. And you know what, apostle? God dealt with me. I was in a conference and he said, ain't gonna be no spitting in a bucket. And, and people release stuff to go back so they can get back, go back into the same thing that you labored with them to get. Uh-uh, because when a house is swept and garnished, if it ain't filled with something, seven something coming back seven times worse than what's left. So if you come into the altar and you want to purge, guess what, baby? While you purging, after you get through purging, we're going to tear it for the Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Glory, glory. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you want to sweat the preacher's clothes out. <laughs> won't give $20 for a cleaning bill. <laughs> you want folks to call folks on every, every hour of the night. I'm helping somebody. Yes. 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 Your ministry can't take precedence over your marriage. God is a God of order. God ain't gonna call the preacher to go to a single woman's house at night to pray for her. Baby, you need to get up because sister so-and-so want us to come over and pray. And you be you let your wife ring that doorbell. Ding dong, this is Sister Henderson. How can I help you? in the pastor and, and, and go over his wife because that's his helpmate. Uh, we was at a restaurant. We was at a restaurant and, and we were eating ribs at this restaurant and I never eat all the ribs. Y'all know that story. I never eat all the ribs at the restaurant because they're so good. And I had, I had an errand to run, prophetess. I had an errand to run that Saturday morning and prophet night, my husband said, you gonna be mad at me, baby. And I already knew it was something that had to do with the refrigerator. He said, baby, I ate your ribs. I said, you ate my ribs? He said, yeah, baby, but it took a rib to get a rib. So how you gonna argue with a comeback like that? I said, okay, baby, get your clothes on because you gotta take the rib to get some more ribs. <laughs> so we went and got some more ribs. <laughs> you can't get to him without getting through the rib. Right. And so ribs be easy to entreat. A wise woman builded up her house, but a foolish woman took it down with her hands. And a wise mother told me, she said there was a woman that used to come to the church. She used to come to the church every Sunday and she would drop $700, $1,000. And she was coming and she had a purpose in mind. She wanted to take my husband from me. And she was dropping all that money. And as she was dropping the money, she said, I had a little attitude. I was sitting over there on the side and I had a little attitude. She said, but the Lord told me to watch his mannerisms. Watch how he reacts to her. And he was, she was dropping the money and then he was dropping it in her purse. He was dropping it in his wife's purse. He was giving it to the wife and, and she began to, you know, dress herself up. And after a while, the woman got tired because she saw it wasn't nothing going on there. See, you got to know who you connected to. And the problem is that we connect with people that we don't know the connectivity that we have connected to. I need to know how you going to handle things when the lights get cut off. Are you going to trip because we got to light some bath and body works candles. How about let's make this situation a real romantic one. Let's, 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 let's get some candles going and, and, and let, let, me, let me give you that massage that I hadn't had time to give you because we were so busy. Are you going to trip when it ain't nothing in the kitchen to eat? My God, my God. When you're not driving the kind of car that you want to drive. My God. When you don't have the money in your pocket that you want to have in your pocket. You got to learn how to be grateful. You got to learn how to be thank you. How to, how to be thankful. You know, we do something on the first of the month. My husband say the bills are paid. I say thank you, honey, for paying the bills. 
I appreciate you for keeping a roof over my head. Don't you know that go a long way? So Naomi was being told by Ruth, I appreciate what you've done. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just say it because it's in the room. What that got to do with the message? How you going to talk about commitment? It's covenant. Covenant yeah. is a relationship between two parties who make up binding promises to each other. Y'all yeah. saw the color purple and Celie and her sister was being drugged away and they was doing that. Yeah. And they was going backwards and she, Celie, Celie, and she doing all that. It was a covenant that was bound in them and nothing that went on could break the covenant between the two of them. Yes, yes. My God. Even in the natural, you got siblings, yes. you got children, and just because your children get on your nerves, yes. and they don't do what you instructed them to do, that don't mean you throw them away. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's what we need more of, grace. Grace. We need long suffering. Yes, my God, my God. But can I tell you, there's an apostolic grace that has hit this earth realm. And we don't even know what time we're living in. God is getting his church ready. He's getting the church ready for his return. And he caused the pandemic to happen so that we can face our own issues. Got locked up in the house for 63 days with a man. And some of you got locked up in the house with your children. And you was ready for your kids to go back to school. But the independent school district says, Psych, y'all got to homeschool these kids. <laughs> Spent 63 days at home. And did not want to leave when it was over. We ate, I cooked, we laughed. Tried to play some Uno, that didn't work. Oh, he said, like to cheat. Uh, <laughs> me too. Took me to the keyboard, showed me some chords on the keyboard. Yeah. Spend time. That's it. That's right. Commitment requires you having to spend time right. with the individual or the entity that you say you're committed to. We don't want to spend time with God. We got the verse of the day that pops up on our phone and yes. we think we didn't did something. But he said, let the word dwell in you richly. He said, hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against him. There's going to come a day, church, that the, the Bible that you carry or your phone, your phone, what you going to do when the networks go out? And you can't pick up that verse. You better have you some scriptures because the devil don't respect your huna kanama, huna matata. He don't respect none of that but he has to respect the word because the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God the word was in a heavenly place seated in a heavenly place and he knows that because he was there he got kicked out of there he knows that the word was made manifest and it dwelt among us so his respect isn't for your tongues it's not for your title it's not for the papers that you got hanging on your wall but it's respective of the word of God my God. The word and the name Jesus. Because he can't do nothing with that name. Because God gave him a name that there is no other name that's equivalent with that name. Demons tremble at that name. Let me get back to the text. She said, entreat me not to leave you. She said, where you go, I go. And this is what kept me. She said, your God is going to be my God. And isn't it funny that we got the only God. We got the greatest God. And there is no other God like our God. But we act like we live in beneath our potential. We don't understand that he's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our Jehovah Tiskanu. He's our Jehovah Raha. He's our Jehovah Nisi. He's our Jehovah Shalom. And we go looking for other things to only do what God can do. We go to nail shops with a big Buddha sitting on the table with a bowl of fruit and incense. But when you get in trouble, you can't call Buddha with the big bowl of fruit and the incense burning because Buddha can't hear you because he's a big clay. He's big statue of wax. He's, 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 he's sitting next to
to some, what you call that lucky bamboo that ain't helping him, but you want to call on everybody else but Jesus. But Jesus, my God, Jesus. Covenant is a relationship between two people, two partners which make binding binding promises. It used to be in a day and a time where you didn't have to have a contract because men and women were men and women of their word. If I told you that I'm going to be there, if I told you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to take your money and not do what you asked me to do. My God, my God. But because of the wickedness of men, we, we, we got courts and saints ought not be in court suing one another on, because we on, ought to on. be leaders in the earth realm. He, she said, but uh, she said, your God is going to be my God. She said, where you bury, where you die, I want to die. Mm -hmm. That's something. That's 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 that's, that's, that's saying something, prophetess. That, that 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 I've seen your walk, and I've seen how you walk circumspectly before God. How you honored your husband, even in death. How you released me because you didn't want me to be a burden to you. And and I just want to honor you with my commitment because I promised your son. You didn't know nothing about this, but I promised your son that if anything ever happened to him, that I wouldn't leave you. That I would be with you. I would take care of you, even if I met another man you would be the you would be the grandmother to my children you would be the the, the 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 matriarch of our family because of the covenant that I made my God that's good that's good hallelujah she said if aught but death part thee and me Naomi said okay girl it seems like I can't get rid of you. <laughs> Since I can't get rid of you, I gotta figure out what we gonna do. Uh huh. But I figured out something. That 37th division of Psalms, he starts out fret not thyself because of evil doers. Let me tell you something. Commitment don't matter, huh? I gotta go here. Commitment doesn't matter if if somebody doesn't uh, like that you join with somebody because we got people in the church. We got more witches in the church than we do outside of the church. We got more warlocks in the church than we do outside of the church. And when people get married, we got people that speak word curses and put names on altars and say, oh, they won't be married after such and such. Oh, y'all, how, how do I know it? Because uh, somebody told told me, uh, uh, somebody, such and such said, y'all won't last two years. It's seven. Seven is completion. And yeah, the enemy reared up his head and it ain't been easy, but we still sticking and staying. I'm like Gorilla Glue. I ain't going nowhere. He said, fret not yourself because of evil doing. I don't care about hocus pocus. I don't care about gitchy dust and none of that other stuff. The Bible said, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. He said, I have given thee power to tread on serpent, scorpion, and all the power of the enemy. And no thing by any means shall harm thee. So keep on doing what you're doing, trying to tear down somebody else's house. You'll never be able to build a house trying to tear down somebody else's house. Say, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. And the problem is that the church has looked at the world and want to be like the world. We want the things of the world. We want the paparazzi that the world got. We want to drive up in big suburbans and big Cadillacs and all kind of cars. And people taking your picture when you get out the car. And you just, hey, hey, hey. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. But you know, the higher your elevation, the higher level of your covenant, the higher level of your commitment, the higher level of your servitude. How about let me open up your car door when you pull up on the parking lot? Come on. Come on. Come on. But we become accustomed and I, and I gotta go here. I gotta go here. We become accustomed because religion was given to African American people in oppression. Yes. Come on. And so through oppression we praised a God that was given to us. That's why Negro spirituals and songwriters songs say, Nobody knows <laughs> the trouble I see. Nobody knows but Jesus. Yes, he knows. And he says this, I don't want you to stay. And I'm not saying nothing about our history. It's important to know where we came from so we don't go back to the things that we came out of. 
Yes. But the slave mentality never left the church. So now we got people that's supposed to be in leadership, in covenant with the people of God, but they want to lord over the people. They want to abuse the people. And because we conditioned to abuse, conditioned to abuse at home, conditioned to abuse on the job, conditioned to abuse at church, we think all we're supposed to do is be abused. But Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He said, be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. He said, stand in the liberty in which Christ has made you free. He that the Son has set free is free indeed. And when you don't understand who you are, you don't understand whose you are. And it will cause you to violate the principles of covenant. Covenant means that because you thought enough of me to put a ring on my finger and license on me and give me your last name, that there is a benefit to the relationship that we have. Okay, let me let me go here since y'all acting like y'all don't understand what I'm saying. People have emotional support animals and they put chips in emotional support animals. So you can't just leave that dog or that cat on the side of the road because if you do, the law is coming to arrest you. They gonna put you in jail and you gonna have a Peter and Paul prison ministry. <laughs> yes, yes. So if you got to have that kind of commitment to have papers on an animal, how much more should we be committed to standing in the gap for one another? I ain't got to talk to you to know that something is going on because there's an inward witness. We got the same uh, network, the same network that sends signal. Uh, we got a network that's stronger than Verizon and AT&T and Sprint and T-Mobile. His signal goes all over the world. Don't you know his people in Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, and, and, and China praying for you and you don't even know them. All over the world because of their commitment to God. Yes, yes, he yes. said, pray without ceasing. Paul said, I made mention of you daily. I get up daily praying for you. Even though I'm persecuted by the church. Even though I'm on the run. Even though y'all don't even treat me right. You trip about giving me a little offering. You trip about what I'm coming and going. What church I spent too much time with. And, and, and I'm not tripping because I understand that there's something that I got to do while I'm in the earth realm. Because when I'm gone, my time is up. Somebody say, prophet, as you preach too hard, guess what? It won't be said that I didn't give God everything I got. It won't be said that he didn't get every fiber of my being. If I'm going to get hoarse, I'm going to get hoarse from God. If I'm going to be tired, it's going to be for righteousness sake. Because I'm committed to my committed. Because when I was in the room, alone in the room, just me and myself, drinking myself to a cuckoo house, the whole spoke to me and said, oh, you going to do this? You going to do this? Why? Because I had a praying mama. I had a praying church mother. And just because I wasn't in the house didn't mean they stopped praying. Thank you. We play with this thing. On my way to a devil's hell. Didn't care nothing about purpose, destiny, prophecy. Didn't care nothing about that. I had a problem and my problem seemed bigger than anything that I could imagine a solution could handle it. But God said, if you be, if you just trust me, you trust me, just trust me, commit. He said, will you marry me? Will you marry me? With this ring, one ring, that crown of thorns he had on his head. With this ring, I be with. He took that ring. And he said, I love you so much that I'm not going to leave you in a raggedy earthen vessel. If this earthen vessel be dissolved, we got treasures that's not of this world. You committed to the commitment. Are you truly committed? God, yeah, I got sickness in my body. And I was on my sick bed. 
the Lord spoke to me. He said, I don't want you to embrace that. You said, I'm your Jehovah Ra. I'm the God that healed thee. He said, do you believe I am what I told you I am? I told Moses I am that I am. I told, I told Abraham to just trust me to get up and go. And he got me up out the bed, Lady Walker. And he said, I don't want you to embrace this, but I want you to take authority over it. How you take authority? You say, in the name of Jesus. Because I'm married to him, I can use his name. Can't nobody else use his name. I can use his name. Now in the natural, it might be some other women that got the last name Henderson. And they don't want to change their names. Come on now. Because folks don't really miss you and get who you are until they get to the other side and find out that the grass wasn't as green as they thought it was. That's true. So the Lord gave me this revelation. Just because just because you come into the knowledge of who I am don't mean I have to go back to where you are. That's right. Yes, Lord. Come on now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, use my name. Yes, 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 God. Homeless, three children. Didn't have a dime to my name. Went to a house. Y'all can look it up on Zillow. $400,000 house. Facing the golf course. I didn't have a dime. But how many of you all know when you got favor, you can save your money and spend your favor? was after I was alone in the room trying to drink myself to death. Jesus. <laughs> trying to drink myself to death. Y'all look at the polished Mother Henderson. But there was a, y'all don't understand prophets go through depression. They suffer depression. Ask Elijah. They, 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 they go through depression. They got a mantle and they, what, what I'm supposed to do with this mantle to this stiff neck, hard head people, this rebellious people. And you telling me to give them the word and they, 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 they won't come out of what they love. They return back to their vomit. And I'm getting all of this backlash because I chose to do what you called me to do. Told Jeremiah, you can't even have a wife and kids. And you think it's glamorous to hold a mic. Yeah. Come on now. Oh. My God. My God. So I had my apple vodka and my cranberry juice. My name. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> yes, Lord. My God. Come on. Yes, Lord. I learned that in my struggle, everything I went through, God said I will use it for my glory. Yes, Lord. Yes. People say, Oh, you made so many mistakes. Oh, you must not be living right because you had to go through all that. God had to take some people through some things to get them out of them. They had to die so that he could live in them. Jesus, my God. myself. <laughs> then, 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 then this 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 how committed he is to you. My God. I was dating a guy who was cheating on me. Yes. And I'm and I'm stressing over it. Holy Ghost, let me get in my truck, Apostle. Ain't have no GPS. He said, make a left. I made a left. He said, go down. Make a right. <laughs> made a right. Who I see in the middle of the street dancing with a cup in their hand. My God, my God. My God. <laughs> he said, I'm going to prove to you that I'm God. Yes, yes, yes. If you make your bed in hell, I'm there. I got GPS locators on everybody. everybody. Yes, yes. Now who you going to serve? My God, my God. That's great. <laughs> Took me didn't have to go through no 12-step program. Yes, yes, yes. Just came. I said, God, in the room that I was drinking in, I said, God, if you get me out of this, God, I live for you till I die, God. I never go back on my promise. He took me in 
a matter of moments from homeless on the way to being an alcohol. Put me in a house that I couldn't afford to live in in the neighborhood that my FICO score disqualified me from. And he said, I take one down and I put one up. Promotion comes from me. And he gave me some instructions. And I'm going to just tell you like he told me. He said, if you let that man step on this property, you're going to lose it. So in the process, see, we've been living in the faith realm. But this new apostolic grace allows us to live in the glory realm. Because we're under an open heaven. And God just said, I want to know how committed you are. Because I'm about to rain down on you. And I don't want the stuff that I'm about to give you to cause you to move. Yes, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you didn't plant. I'm going to bless and establish your seed. I'm going to make your name great. But I got to make sure that you're committed to me. And I was so for real. I was so for real, man of God, with the commitment. I began to pray Jabez's prayer. God, that you would keep me from all evil. Keep me from all evil. Knowing and unknowing, God. I got so in love with him that I would show up at the house that I didn't have the money to buy. Took the key out the lockbox so couldn't nobody else get in the house. And I went in the house and I would pray all over the house. And I would ask God, God, do it for me and my babies. You told me in Isaiah 54 and 5 that that maker is my husband. You told me, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. He said, I'm going to give you this house. But this not your permanent. Come on, come on. Yes. This is temporary. This is a tent. Don't try to make it permanent. Right, right, right. God gave it to me. I tried to make it permanent. Didn't know I was gonna be in Texas. Cause I hate heat like God hates sin. I didn't know I was gonna be here. And he was telling me you're not gonna be here. Watch this. He said, fret, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall be soon cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. <laughs> now, the guy that was cheating on me, he found out that this girl must really be, yes. God really must have his hand on her. And, and, and so the, 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 the Holy Ghost is so, he's so, oof. He's so powerful that I was walking around. I just kept saying his name. Just this, this, this. Jacinta, Jacinta. What is that? What is that? Mm -hmm. That was the girl's name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so he thought I broke in his phone. <laughs> Holy yes. Ghost told me that. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my God. I'm drinking myself into a stupor. And God says, I'm not going to let you die because I got purpose for your life. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So let me show you that when I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee and I sanctified thee as a prophet. Yes. Yes. Yes, so just because you got an identity crisis don't mean that my hand is not still on your life. Moved into the house. Somebody say, did. did. Moved into the house. Ah! Had one good working toilet. Five bathrooms, five bedrooms, four levels. My God. Lord, have mercy. My God. Went to the third level. I said, it's the door? What is this? As I was going up the stairs, he said, this is the upper room. This is where I want to meet with you. And the house was on a hill. It was, it was on an incline. It was on a hill. He said, people going to know that this is my house. They going to know that it's a righteous woman living in that house. And didn't have a job, Apostle. God gave me a job. He gave me some neighbors that put my name in a, in a, in a, 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 a giveaway back to the community so that I could get a furnace for the house. Didn't have what I needed when I, when, before I got there. But when I got there, because of the commitment that God has with us, everything that I needed was there. God caused people that put their mouth on me to become an open purse to me. So you think I'm going to lose my commitment with God because people trip and don't want to give you 
a little few dollars. They don't want to acknowledge the gift and the calling on your life. They want to disrespect you. You think I'm a triple with that when I've seen God heal my body? Give me homes when I was homeless. Raise my children. Raise up my mother. Do miracle signs and wonders. Okay, all right. Oh, stop. He said, for they shall soon be cut down and wither away as the green grass. So after I moved in the house, and that's why I could say, I'm not down and about the way. Well, I'm walking in the light. Holiness is right. I'm not down and about the way. I can sing that because I lived that. And as sure as I was praising God over the blessing, guess who rang my phone? If you take me back, I said I wasn't good enough for you on Ohio, and baby, I sure ain't good enough for you now. I said, trust in the Lord and do good. Yes. Yes. I'm in that house. Trust in God. Yes. Trust in God. Yes. I needed curtains for my windows. A man walked off and left his house. He said, I can't, can't afford this. It's too much. He said, go in the house and get whatever you want. That table that I'm giving you, I carried that table down the street. I carried that table up on my head. Somebody was in the house. They said, I want that table. I said, no, that's my table. And I got some strength from somewhere and carried that big old table. I said, I'm going to show them I might be thin, but I ain't weak. And walked down the street like Loretta Devine walked down the street. Oh, no. And you y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Took the table back. My Ooh. baby boy said, Mama, you carried that table? Yes. I said, show D. <laughs> Put the table in the house, said, lock the door. Damn. Went back to the house. I said, I want all the curtains because yeah. I needed some curtains. Oh, no. See, sometimes we got to go to the best place to get what we need. But sometimes God will let people buy some stuff and they'll be disinherited so you can be inherited to get what you need. Glory. Went in that house and felt like I was at Neiman Marcus. Shopping. Every window covered. Put clocks on the on the walls. Artwork on the wall. Vases on the table. Oh yes, I did. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. God let people cut my grass and shovel my snow because that's a single woman and she go to church. Oh yes, they did it. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. Yes, yes. And verily thou shalt be fed. How about this? In the midst of the move, apostle, had three sons and I got food stamps. Yes. And I wasn't silly with my food stamps. Yes. Yes. Folks get food stamps and they sell them. Yeah. 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 Government ain't giving you food stamps for nothing. Right. Mm. Y'all better stock up on some non-perishables and some water. Amen. <sighs> Thank you, Took my food stamps and I always buy. Go in the store. First Lady Walker. I went in the store. Neck bones, 15 cents. Mm. Somebody mismarked the packages of meat. Wow. So I got all the meat. Who am I talking to? Come on here. Come on here. Mismarked dial soap and, and clay air fresheners on clearance. Because they got to make room for some more stuff. And I'm buying all this stuff and people say, oh, we, we got a need. And I'm giving stuff away as fast as it's coming in my house. And my son said, mama, why you keep giving all our stuff away? And I had enough God says to know that, baby, I'm not going to be with you always. But if I so good see, God will remember mine. Oh, 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 mama, why you giving all our stuff 
careful what I said because there's going to come a day that I'm not going to be able to get to you. And I believe that God is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That the Lord will provide. That he will give you what you need. The problem is our commitment is supposed to be an outward showing. Don't tell me you love me and you go upside my head. Show me that you love me. Love is an action word. My mother said something to me. She said, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't have gave you the money to get that house. I wouldn't have put a car in your keys in your hand. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't get up every morning and go to work and make sure you had clothes on your back and food on the table. Love ain't always. We so sensitive now. We so soft. We got, we, we need so much attention. We need so much curdling. We got all to have all this. Love is, baby, I get up every work and can go to work every day and I provide a roof over your head. I put you in some good shoes. Some of us got red bottoms. Some of us got Gucci purses, Louis Vuitton and you're like, you don't love me. Trust in the Lord and do good. You can't buy love either. You can't buy love. I told my husband, I said, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Come on, we're going we, we about to get out of here. I said, I'm so glad I met you when we were both broke. I'm going there because, because see, he, he had to deal with me. He had to check me on some things. He says, so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Apostle, this, 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 this is what got me blessed. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. 25 years ago, I asked for him. I said, God, let this man be my husband. It wasn't my time. It wasn't my turn. And so God allowed him to break up with me. Yeah, I got to tell this story because I got to talk about commitment. So my, my, my church mother said, baby, he ain't married yet. Come on, then call him. And out of obedience, I called him. And he was like, I'm good, I'm straight. And I said in my head, I'm going to never call you again. That was in Detroit, Michigan. A.K.A. Highland Park, Michigan. <laughs> Don't make me do the team and turn. <laughs> Fast forward 17 years later. Fooled around and got into that principle. Because you can't understand what commitment is until you learn how to delight in something. Yes. Well. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Fooled around and got into a place. Come on, y'all can stand up. Fooled around and got into a place where I was telling the Lord, God, what do you want to eat today? Yes. What you want me to eat today? What you want me to wear today? Yes. Who you want me to meet today? Where are you going to send me today? fooled around and got caught up in being a mother and said, God, I don't want to be nothing else but a mother and yeah. an evangelist. Take everything that goes along with being a wife. Take it from me and, and I'll be Isaiah 54 and 5. I'll be the wife that you yeah. want to be me to be and you can be my husband and you can be father to my children. Got caught up in that principle and began to delight myself in the Lord. And I went to a church service on one Friday night in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> and I was getting ready to do like Orpha did. Getting ready to go back to the Moabites. Getting ready to go back because my husband died. Getting ready to make a move backwards. But my aunt said, I want you to come to this church service with me. And I could just hear my spiritual mind say, where you go, I'm going to go. I'm going to take you to the church service. I took, she, I took her to the church service. We got to the church service. And after the, the church service was going on, there was a, a, a pastor. She was preaching and she was praying. I'm sorry. She was praying. She was praying, prophet is that when she was praying. Like I hear God say, you keep on praying like that. Then you're going to walk into the building that y'all going to be in. You keep on praying like that. You keep speaking to me like that. You keep loving on me like that. Then I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. And it's going to be an affordable blessing. I'm going to give it to you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, 
I, I was in the place, I was in the place, and the woman of God was praying, and I said, God, if you want me to go back, I'll go back, and, and I'll go through the humiliation, because people said, I told you not to leave. I'm in the book, I'm in this story, I told you, I told you not to leave, you shouldn't have left, because yeah, yeah. what you left with died, now you got to come back, and we got to take care of you. People won't let you forget what they got to do for you when yeah. they got to do it. So here we are, we in the service. And the woman of God was praying, and for the first time in months, I felt breakthrough. My God. My God. My God. My God. The Lord. Yes, Lord. See, people that ain't never been through nothing don't know what breakthrough feels like. Yes, come on. Yes, come on. So I'm sitting there, standing there, like you are, Sister Liz. She starts singing. And I was looking at her, why did you stop praying? Don't you know I felt like I was climbing Jacob's ladder and you gonna stop praying and start singing. And then I hear the Lord say, look to your right. And I look to the right and who was on the organ was Roy Henderson was on the organ. And I looked up to heaven. I said, God, you got to be kidding. On top of everything I'm going through, you gonna send me that? He said, I am committed to you, daughter. And I said, delight myself in the delight yourself in the Lord. And I give you the desires of your heart. When we desire a thing, it might not be time for you to walk into that thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, 10 months passed. I said, I don't, mm -mm. We got to the car before that. Got to the car and I could see my aunt like Naomi. She said, that's the kinsman redeemer. <laughs> he gonna break up. Shut up. He gonna break the neck of poverty, baby. She said, I like the way he handled you. Woo. I said, okay. Yes, yes. My God, my God. But I was obedient. Yes, yes. That was a Friday night. We went back Sunday because because I had to really show them what I was working with because I had just got on work Friday. I wasn't church ready Friday. Yes, yes. I had to come back to Church of God in Christ glorified. <laughs> Sunday. I looked so good they escorted me to the front row. Yes, yeah, she got to be somebody. But Friday night, y'all wouldn't give me a bottle of water. <laughs> Sunday, I had water coming from everywhere. Who am I talking to you? It's your time and it's your turn. And it comes from your commitment. See, you think that we so we serve a God that's unrighteous, a God that forgets our labor of love, a God that doesn't know where you're at, doesn't know what you're going through. But he said, I put the vision in you so I know exactly where you are. I know exactly what you're trying to do. I know exactly where you want to be. But in my timing, don't think that you miss my timing because in my timing, you're going to show up right on time. And, and the thing that I love about God is because he is Kairos. He is time. He stops time. He'll make time stand still for you. He'll make time wait on you. So that Sunday night we went back. Always a gentleman drove me to my car because he honored Naomi. Yeah, I know what I said. He honored Naomi.